this topic, we're continuing our discussion on controllability, and also we're going to look at canonical forms. So we saw last time that there were a number of tests for stability that we could employ. So we're going to look more in detail at these tests. And um, so controllability tests. So we've given discrete time LTI system. And since the controllability depends only upon A and B, then we can talk about the pair AB as being controllable. So in, in order to define what's going on, I'm going to define a number of things. Actually, I looked at these a little bit last time. <clears throat> First, I'm going to look at, uh, we have a left eigenvalue and eigenvector. So the eigenvalue is not really right or left. The ve it's just a scalar value, but the vector is a left vector. So that is, I mul the, it multiplies my matrix on the left. So that's an eigenvector. So again, the vector itself cannot be zero. And um, so we have this. We have the PHR matrix, X subscript C of Z, given by this. We can talk about something called an uncontrollable mode. We talked about that a little last time. It's a value of lambda such that, I'm sorry, a controllable mode is an eigenvalue of lambda such that the rank of this matrix is equal to n. So if lambda is any eigenvalue or any mode of the system, we plug it into xc. If that has rank n, then that is a controllable mode. An uncontrollable mode, then, is if we take x of c, plug in lambda, and the rank of that is less than n where again, A is an n by n matrix. So that's an uncontrollable mode. So that's an important definition. We have the controllability matrix, QC, which is B, A, B, A squared, B, all the way up to A to the power n minus 1, B. So this actually has n block columns in general. We have the controllability Gramian. We looked at this last time a little bit. So it's basically this summation finite summation. And we have a state feedback matrix. So if we have some matrix F of this dimension, then we will form this, what is called a state feedback matrix um, that includes the use of F. Okay. So later on when we come to control, one of the control methods we're going to employ is something called state feedback. And so this is talking about that. So that's what the state feedback matrix is. We can talk about a state feedback fixed mode. So if lambda is some value that is an eigenvalue of this matrix, A plus BF, this is the square matrix. If this, if lambda is an eigenvalue of this matrix for all F, then we have what is called a state feedback fixed mode. So that as an eigenvalue, as a mode, that value is fixed for all F. We can also talk about block triangularizing transformations. We saw this earlier when we talked when we saw the notion of of a a invariant subspace. So we can talk about a block triangularizing transformation. So it's a non-singular transformation such that when you apply it to a t a t inverse, you get a block of zeros down here, where this is square and this is square. Okay, so in general, when we do that, we'll get two matrices here, B1 and B2 bar. Okay, and so we have this form. So this is a particular form. So having made those definitions now, so <laughs> you can see there's a lot of definitions, we move on to talk about the controllability tests. And there are a number of tests for controllability. We've already seen some, and so I'm not going to prove all of these in the proof. Some of those have already been proved. We're going to look at, at all of these uh, tests for controllability. So the following are equivalent. And we basically have eight things that are equivalent. So A, B are, are a controllable pair. Okay, so we've already talked about that was what that was. And basically, that means that the um, that the um, control map is has a its range is all of Rn. So that's actually what this is. So A B controllable. Second is that there are no left eigenvectors. Okay, so W is of this dimension, not zero, such that 
it's a left eigenvector and wb is equal to zero. So there are none of these. Notice that we look here at eigenvectors, not necessarily generalized eigenvectors. Remember, in general, we may have a Jordan form. It turns out that the issue really is an issue of, of eigenvectors, not generalized eigenvectors. The P, so the next is the PHR matrix has rank n e, rank equal to n for all complex values of z. So we saw last time that this matrix will have rank n for almost all values of z. The only possible exceptions are when z is an eigenvalue of the matrix A. Next, we have the controllability matrix has rank n. The range of the controllability matrix is all of Rn. So it's not hard to see that these two are equivalent to each other. Having rank for us n by n matrix to have rank n is equivalent to having the range equal R of all of Rn. So these two are, it's easy to prove that these are equivalent. So here we have there exists some time t1 such that the Gramian up to time uh, from time t 0 to t is non-singular for all t greater than or equal to t1. Okay, so we have that. So that there's a there's some time t1 such that beyond that the Gramian is positive, is actually is non-singular. Of course, we cannot actually show that it's positive definite. Then we have for any nth order monic polynomial alpha subscript c of z, there exists a state feedback gain f such that the character, characteristic polynomial of a plus bf is alpha c of z. So what this is saying is I can find the state feedback gain to make this have characteristic polynomial equal to this, whatever that is. And since th this holds for any alpha, that means we can choose this arbitrarily. And we'll come back later and see that we can use this to design a controller for the system. Finally, any block triangularizing transformation T is such that this B2 matrix in, so remember we had the A bar matrix and the B bar matrix. This is the B bar matrix, the bottom part is not zero. So for any, so this says that any block triangularizing transformation T is such that this is not zero. So. This is our, these are the eight equivalent tests for controllability. So I kind of have them laid out here this way. So I have the range of the control map. I have the uh, controllability uh, Gramian being positive definite. I have QC having rank N or, or similarly, it, QC times its transpose determinant is uh, this should be not zero. Um, arbitrarily eigenvalue placement by state feedback. So that's the that's the a plus b f being able to find an a plus b f to put the uh, to mit, to uh, form the characteristic polynomial to be whatever alpha c we want. Here's our block triangularizing transformation. Any block triangularizing transformation leaves this guy eaten on zero. So if this says if I have any any left eigenvector that w times b is not zero, so no uncontrollable mode. This is the PHR test. The rank of that is equal to n for all c. So I have these laid out here like this. So look in the proofs to see some of the proofs of these theorems. I haven't proved them all, but I've proven enough for you to get the basic idea behind what's going on state feedback. So notice that um, if lambda is an uncontrollable mode of AB, then we know that for the W is non-zero and WA is equal to lambda W and WB is equal to zero. So that's the definition of an uncontrollable mode. If we look at the state feedback problem associated with this, we notice that W times A plus BF, if I distribute W, I get WA plus WBF. WA is equal to lambda times W wb is equal to zero and so notice that i have this is equal to lambda w which means that w is a left eigenvector of this matrix 
So this shows that an uncontrollable mode for the system is equivalent to a state feedback fixed mode, what I, what I call the state feedback fixed mode. That is, this, this matrix, regardless of f, will always have an eigenvalue at lambda. Okay, so that's, a, that's what we call the state feedback fixed mode. So regardless of f, we're going we're to get that. Now, in terms of the state feedback, we said that we can find a state feedback gain for any arbitrary uh, characteristic polynomial alpha c. And if their system is single input, single output, and if our system is controllable, then this is an f that will actually give us the desired characteristic polynomial. So this is called Ackerman's formula. And so notice that it requires qc to be invertible. So first of all, it has to be square. That can only happen if you have a single input system. And it has to be non-singular, which means it is controllable. So this, this depends upon the controllability. And we can show that, that the characteristic polynomial of a plus bf is, in fact, alpha c of z. We can set it equal to that by using this formula. Notice that alpha c of a here is we take the alpha c that we want, and we, we form the polynomial version of that here. Okay, so we actually have that nice property. Sim, uh, state transformation. So suppose that we have a, a transformation that we're going to work with, not necessarily a block triangularizing transformation, just any transformation, which is just a non-singular matrix T. So if we, if we use that to perform a similarity transformation, we can show that the new controllability matrix in the new coordinates, so in the bar coordinates, is given by this. But B bar is equal to TB, A bar is equal to TAT inverse, B bar is TB, and so forth. We can plug that in. And notice that wherever I see a T inverse, I have a T, and those guys are going to cancel. So this becomes TB, this becomes TAB, and so forth. I'm going to get these guys canceling all the way along. And so I can actually factor out a T out of all this. And so I get this. And so Q bar C is equal to T times QC. And so the rank of this matrix is equal to the rank of this matrix because T is non-singular. Okay, so we have that. Again, so we have this relationship. So for any transformation, non-singular transformation, we have this relationship. And so the rank, this says range, it should say ranks are equal to each other. And so the, the one system is controllable if and only if the other system is controllable. This says that controllability is invariant under similarity transformation. So suppose we have a block triangularizing transformation, then in general our new a, if we raise it to the power k, is going to be of this form, where mk is given by this. So notice this is in terms of the bar matrices of a bar, so we have this. And the new uh, b matrix, I'm sorry, a, a, a to the power k times b is going to be given by this expression. Okay, And so suppose that t is a block triangularizing transformation, and suppose that a22 bar b2 bar is not controllable. Then there exists a left eigenvector w2, not 0, so that this is, a, is indeed a left eigenvector. Uh, that should say w2. And w2 bar is equal to 0. So if we now let w equal this vector that includes w2, because w2 is not 0, this whole vector is not 0. It's just not a 0 matrix, a vector. When I multiply a bar by this, so here's a bar. Multiplied by this, I get this. So I'm going to get this. But w2 a bar 2, 2 is equal to lambda w2. And so I can factor out lambda here and get lambda times w. This shows that I have a left, I, I have a left eigenvector now of this. And so we see that even with, with a block triangularizing transformation, A2 two bar and B2 bar must be controllable for the original system to be controllable. So suppose that um, it's not controllable. So what we've shown now is that w times a bar is equal to lambda times w, where w is given by this, and w times b bar is given by this. So if this is equal to 0, then the system, the system a bar b bar is not controllable.
So um, suppose that T is a block triangularizing transformation where B bar 2 is 0. Then clearly A bar 2, 2 and B bar 2 is not controllable because B2 is 0. And if I look at A bar to the power K times B bar, I'm going to get this expression. Notice that B2, is B B2 bar is 0, so I get this. And when I form the new controllability matrix, I get this. I get, I get a set of zeros down here. And so this shows that I have, uh, this, this cannot have uh, full range or uh, rank n. So I've been working primarily with discrete time controllability, but continuous time controllability follows essentially along the same lines as for discrete time. And the reason is, is it's a structural property. It's how things are connected within the system. And so continuous and discrete systems have the same structural properties. The structural properties of controllability and observability, we're going to talk about observability later, they're not related. They're independent of stability. So the main, main difference between controllability in continuous time and discrete time is that we have a different control map and a different Gramian. But even though we have different expressions for these, we still have the similar results for them. Now, when we talk about controllability, we can also talk about stabilizability. So controllability is independent of stability. But a system is said to be stabilizable if every unstable mode of the system is controllable. So we can connect the two through this concept of stabilizability. That is, if the unstable mode is controllable, if all of them, then the system is stabilizable. Alternately, the system is not stabilizable if there is an uncontrol unstable, uncontrollable mode. Then the system is not stabilizable. So as a consequence, if the system is controllable, then all the modes are controllable, which means the unstable modes are controllable, and so it is stabilizable. So if it's controllable, it's automatically stabilizable. If the system is stable, then there are no unstable modes, and so it is stabilizable. So in, in these two cases, we have that. But it is possible for it to be uncontrollable and un unstable. So this is, the, this is a connection between stability and controllability. And, and uh, so we've talked about a number of tests, and we've looked at a number of facets of these tests. We're going to now move on to the topic of reachability.